I have a theory that this Farlafax, this particular model, could be the most versatile Farlafax ever made. Let me explain how I'm thinking. It is a four, it is a four-ring Farlafax made in England. I've reviewed this before, but I, I want to revisit it and explain a little bit of my philosophy surrounding this particular Farlafax, this, this particular model. Um, four rings, and the fact that it has four rings and the spacings therein. This this was made by Farlafax for a limited period at the very end of English manufacture. In fact, uh, if we look at the date code here, or the uh, what uh, Farlafax called the quality control codes, we see CDB. Now, um, convention suggests, although the jury's out, convention suggests that the first letter denotes the year of manufacture. Uh, so C, and starting with 1991, I believe, unless I'm correct, it uh, means 91, 92, 93. So this suggests, at least to me, unless I'm otherwise advised, a manufacturing date of 1993. I've got another one here. Let's have a look at the date code or the quality control code here. That's CBB. So again, 1993. So, so we have a we have a binder that was made around about the early 90s, and it uh, it, in, it it does indeed say made in England. And if I can see, it says real kid, so kid leather. Um, I think that's so sad, isn't it? Using kid leather, but but there we go. I won't I won't uh, go a bundle on that. Uh, but it's um, it's functional. It's uh, it, it, you know it's uh, it's very it's a very simple binder. But what makes it versatile, in my humble opinion, is the ring spacing. So let me give you an example. And see and show you what I've done here. So here we go. Let me turn that over. So this is a personal size Filofax. This is a personal size sheet, and this is another personal size sheet that has been cut down so that I can fit it into my four ring binder. Now, why do I use? personal size sheets. This is my um, week to a page diary. It's a ostensibly a 12 month diary, but it's actually 13 months. So there's a little bit of overlap. Um, and so I'm, I'm using this as a diary using personal size sheets that have been cut down. To be honest, there's not a lot of difference, obviously the same width, and then a little bit off the top, a little bit off the bottom, and crucially, this is why I like the uh, the idea that it is very versatile, you can, for storage purposes, or for reference purposes, or for any purpose you like, you can decant, you can transfer this page into a full-size, personal-sized Filofax, and vice versa. You can transfer a page from here into a pocket-sized diary, the the a pocket-sized binder. This this particular four-ring style, and what I like about it, given the fact that I don't use tabs, some people do, some people don't, is the fact that if you look at the measurements, the actual width, it's it's perfect. It looks like. It looks like a moleskin, doesn't it, to the untrained eye? So, I just want you to imagine that you're in a you're in a cafe and someone's being really nosy and looking at what you're doing. They might not even realise that what you're using is a Filofax, because when you open it, 
For a start, it only has four rings instead of six, and it could conceivably be just just a notebook. Um, I, although I don't use tabs in this particular case, there is a there is a reason why I feel a little bit hypocritical because here I am having a uh, using one tab called Notes, which I've just chamfered a little so that. It doesn't, the sharp edges, the square 90 degree edges don't stick into my jacket pocket or my, or any other pocket and, and start wearing the lining of my clothing. Um, but why do I have one there? Well, what I do is if, if I, if I feel the need to write something down in this particular usage, I could just turn it over and instantly I have got some some paper real estates to jot down the idea that I have and I actually find that a really really pleasant way to use paper this paper is uh, I've got 30 sheets here 30 sheet and let and hold the thought hold these thoughts about the capacity of this binder um, I'm not actually sure what size the rings are, so what I will do is I will measure them carefully, the internal diameter of the rings. And and I believe... Do you know what? I'm, I'm not sure exactly what they are, so I will leave a note in the description below uh, after, after I've done this video with the exact measurements. But um, this is 110 gram paper. 110 grams per square meter and what that means is that if i have let's see so if i have a fountain pen uh, i can i can easily i can easily use this particular paper without bleed over so i i actually like that i like the fact that when i'm out and about the therapeutic um tactile pleasure of using a fountain pen uh, what have I gone on here? This is, uh, uh, there's Waterman ink in this one. Um, I like to uh, change my inks. I have one fountain pen for each colour, each type of ink. Um, that's a little bit uh, pedantic, but I, I like that. I like doing that. Um, so, uh, so I've got this, I use this versatile I, I harness the versatility of this format this pocket format which will allow me to use personal sized punched paper to move backwards and forwards from a personal sized uh, binder to this size of binder uh, you can still buy pocket sized paper with slots so that you can use it in either a modern pocket six ring Folifax or one of these, uh, which had a limited production light run. Um, I'm not sure why they uh, gave up on the idea because I think it's a very, very good idea, primarily because of the ring spacing and also the fact that the width of a personal size page is absolutely ideal in my humble opinion for this type of use and so i've got these 30 pages in here which is more than enough for most people for uh, a day or a, a week or a month's ideas just just jotting things down which i can then transfer to a personal size binder so i really like that concept and on the other side of the notes tab i have a homemade 12 month diary it's a rolling 12 month diary because and the why do i why do i have it and why is it in this in this format where it's only a small amount of real estate for each day it's because and i just uh, i talk about my and refer to my Guildford Mini Extra Slim. I everyday carry quite a lot, but um, you can see that this is Saturday, the twenty fifth of February, and I've got a, two pages. So this is a, a two two pages to a day, and that gives me a huge amount of 
real estate for a whole month. I have got a rolling 12 month diary in here, which is more than enough for the immediacy of the, the coming 30 days. I need this space. I really do need this space, even though I have different diaries for different things. This encompasses not only my daily appointments on one side, but also my things I have to do uh, here. And so I need this real estate, but I don't need that much real estate for month two, three, four, five, etc. So I, I basically use these two diaries in conjunction. So every every day I add another page to this one. And every fortnight, I add another single page to this diary and remove the, and effectively archive the, 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 the page that I, I do not, the sheet that I do not use. So, so every, every, every fortnight, I have to do that. And so what I like about that, it's very, very simple. No, it's not pretentious in any way. It is it just simply works. And to be honest, if I, I've i never come across a situation where I have more than four appointments in one day. If there, I mean, it's, it's almost like um, a self-limiting thing. You know, this is affecting my schedule. I don't want to be in four different places in a single day because, well, I'm, I'm retired or semi-retired now, so that's highly unlikely to happen. To be honest, if it does... I can just add a temporarily, uh, I can add a sticky note on here or I can put uh, see, see additional page or something and just literally add an additional page at the appropriate point in this binder and then I can have a like a continuation of maybe a very, very busy day. So what do I, what do, I do when I get to the point where um, I... I have added a, a new page. So let, let me just, just, just to give you an example. So this is my most recent, this is my most recent day that I added, Tuesday the 7th of March. So I'm going to add, I'm, you know, I'm going to add uh, Tuesday the 8th of March tomorrow. And so what I will then do is look at Tuesday the 8th of March, so where are we? 12th, okay, I'm missing a page here for some reason. Oh, I know why, because I took it out because I didn't want to reveal my personal details, sorry. <laughs> I wondered what was going on, uh, going going wrong there. So, if there is, if there is anything on Tuesday the, uh, sorry, Wednesday the 8th of March on here, then I will then write it out on the Tuesday, just over this page, on Tuesday the 8th of March. So basically I am decanting any information on here into here and so it continues. So the saga of life continues unabated. Um, so I find that this, so long as you're not using too much, I mean what, what are you, at the end of the day what would you be using something like this for? Well it's up to you but we have got here 30 pages, 30 sheets for a rolling 13-month diary, and we've got 30 sheets for anything you like. And, you know, we could have names and addresses, we could have to-do lists, we could have anything you want. But there are 60 pages here. Um, I'm not, I can't remember what the GSM is the grams per square meter for standard Filofax paper like this, but it's fairly thin as we know. It doesn't take a fountain pen very well. It's quite thin. And so it should be because the thinner it is, the more sheets you can get into a binder. So there's always a compromise. I know people sometimes don't like the Filofax paper because it doesn't take a fountain pen very well. Um, but others do like it because it's thin enough to cram your file effects with more sheets than would otherwise be the case but from my particular perspective i i am using at the moment I and mean, everything's subject to change because i like to experiment with paper-based productivity systems such as they are uh, i'm using 
uh, Filofax paper as a diary. And uh, quite often I'm, use I'm using this primarily because, let me give you an example. So you can see that this has come out of uh, a 2015 diary. So pages that I don't use, or indeed pages that other people don't use that just happen to be in a file of facts I buy. Well, I've got a lot of this paper that I need to use up because I don't want to throw anything away that hasn't been used to the full because although I do use a, a, a fair amount of paper, I would say, I don't want to uh, be wasteful of uh, what is effectively a, a, a precious resource, you know. Even though this can be, it, it goes into the re recycling, I can't really, um, uh, if it's got personal information, I can't really put it in the recycling. And so what I do, this this tends to get shredded now. Uh, I'm not quite sure about the procedure for, you know, whether whether shredded paper gets recycled. I hope it does. I, I do put it into the recycling, but um, whether or not it does, I'm not sure. In s small, tiny part, particles, so I've got a cross-cut shredder that, that literally obliterates everything. Um, but I am, I am reusing paper, as you can see. Um... But this this really really works for me at the moment. I I absolutely love it, and I love the form factor. Um, but let me uh, let me talk about uh, something that I'm I have had experience with. It doesn't it hasn't happened on this one, but it has happened on another one that I've acquired. So I acquired this and. There is, as you can see, there are marks here where there's a little bit of rust. Um, I don't know what this is. I mean, this is just uh, cheap, mild steel, I think, um, with a with a um, with a uh, some kind of anodizing, maybe. Um, I'm not sure, but or, or electroplating. It's probably electroplating, isn't it? Not anodizing and. It has worn away through use, and we have some corrosion. Ju judging by the feel of the ring mechanism, it's easy to close, but very stiff to open. So I suspect that there's some corrosion inside, which is not very good, but we are where we are. Um, so I have this one. I I've, I've, think I've got three or four of these, but uh, I... I dug this one out to show you that the, there is some corrosion. So if you buy one of these, have a look closely at the photographs to see whether there is indeed some corrosion. And you can see the, the telltale, the telltale marks uh, on the fabric lining here. Um, so there, you know, it is it is something to be careful of. Perhaps on the on others that I have bought over the years, there has, hasn't been a problem. But but this is an example of one that does have a problem. So um, we know about the interchangeability and the corrosion, and we know how versatile it is. Um, but let let me talk about this leather because it is it doesn't feel luxurious, but it is. It is, I feel, that this is really, really hard wearing. And what I like about this leather is it doesn't look too pretentious. It almost has the same patina as a... This isn't a moleskin, but it is a It is a, um, a lesser-known make. Um, Rodias are, are very, very similar as well, aren't they? Um, but I like the fact that this leather doesn't look too expensive, and that's important, potentially, if you have got this open in a cafe or a train station, waiting room, whatever, you know. Um, I, I, th I like the fact that it is, it, it, it's very, very understated. I mean, it, it, it's probably long lasting, you know, it's, pr it's probably really, really good. Uh, kid leather but it doesn't look too pretentious that's uh, very very important when you've got your your uh, binder out in front of you open to 
prying eyes and temptation. This is really, really serious stuff, you know. I mean, you have to think like this these days, unfortunately. But you do have to, it's, you have to think of each thing and try and minimise, you're not going to solve, resolve all risks, but I think it's important to consider, at least consider these risks, even if it's in a, a cursory manner. You have to think about it. You have to spark that thought in your mind. What if, what if it, what if someone reached over and grabbed it? What if they thought that, hey, you know, I, if I, it, it, maybe you've got your phone on the on the table as well, and they're thinking telephone banking. If I nick the phone, if I nick this as well, if I steal this, it might have some passwords in there for telephone banking, something like that. So. You have to be really, really careful with this. In fact, I would say, as a rule, I want to avoid having my phone out and my file facts out on the same table in view of people because it's a, it's double bubble if it comes to having your phone nicked and your file facts nicked. So really, really important here. Uh, maybe I am being uh, over the top with... Um, uh, my uh, pedantry. Um, but anyway, um, let me let me just talk about. Uh, I'm I'm running through some bullet points here, so it's a little bit disjointed. But uh, I don't have a script, but I am running on bullet points here. Um, there's a, there's a thing that you have to be careful of with these rings, and that is if you if I hold it up here, um, I'm basically using half the half the uh, capacity the potential capacity um but any more than this if you uh, you could come unstuck because as you can see because you're using personal sized punched spacings and when i mean spacing i mean between the edge of the hole and the the edge of the paper you can see that there's a very, very marginal gap here. And that gap would close if you, at any point your the paper, the number of sheets in your file effects start to get to the point where they are, well, they are slightly here, but um, what I'm trying to say is you do not want to move beyond the 90 degree points uh, if you take the angle of incidence as zero from by looking directly at the uh, looking above from the, uh, the the mechanism, ideally you only want to uh, take up the first quarter. This is slightly slightly more, but it's it's okay um, because if you do that, if this starts to if if the if the paper starts if you get if you let me start again if you're getting slightly overstuffed uh, or anywhere approaching it then as you turn the page you will find that the pages conflict with you the edges of the pages conflict with each other now we are absolutely borderline here you can probably hear. There's a little bit of conflict there. Now, I could resolve that by taking maybe 10 pages out of the, the, the here. Um, uh, and and that, would, that would resolve the problem. Um, partly the problem is this 110-gram this paper is, is obviously much thicker than Filofax paper, but I like it, so it's my Filofax, so I can... I can uh, I can fill it as I want, um, but if you if if you limit your paper as I'm doing here, uh, there is a, a there is a, a a problem and a silver lining. So the problem is when you close it and you put it in your pocket. Um, if say you say you were in a situation where there was pressure here. There was pressure here, which is obviously much wider where the rings are than here. It's 
it's considerably wider. So if, if, if for instance, you accidentally, I don't know, trod on it or knelt it on it or sat on it, then uh, you, you might cause damage to the rings. But as luck would have it, if you use a 9 by 14 notebook, this has... Uh, I love these. These are made by Claire Fontaine, and the paper is fantastic for use on virtually any type of writing instrument. But I, I this is this will take a, a fountain pen really, really well. No ghosting, and only a tiny bit of bleed through on the very, very wettest of inks. Um, Ninety gram per square meter ultra high quality and there are 96 pages 48 sheets in here this is the 9 by 14 um 9 centimeters by 14 centimeter uh size which is so so common um all over europe and the uk uh they are very very similar in size to a pocket moleskin um but why is this such a, a useful thing it's because if I if I slide if I slide the the Clairefontaine book into the file effects, it gets to the point where when it's touching the rings there we go. Are we focused? Yes we are. So when you can see when it's touching, when the spine is touching the edge of the rings at the other end, it is a perfect fit. It's an absolute perfect fit. And I know that this is serendipitous. You know, it's not, they didn't design it this like this. Filofax didn't, uh, when they designed this, they didn't think, you know what? If we make it this particular size, people in the future will be able to protect their rings by using a, a, a 9 by 14 centimetre notebook in the pages. I mean, they don't... They probably didn't think that, uh, although uh, being uh, being um, fixated about about this sort of thing, I I have. Um, but it is it is a perfect system, and and this aids the versatility of this system. This this is I I think that this setup is better than. A moleskin, unless of course you're a big fan of moleskins or rodeos or ro uh, rodeos, or you might just use this kind of. Um, you might not use a final facts at all, but if you do, and you use these as well, which probably, I imagine, I'm not the only one to to mix and match. It actually looks very very sweet, uh, neat and tidy. It it just has some. It just has a certain thing about it, um, which uh, I'm not saying I'm I'm some uh, some uh, uh, f fanatical paper based road warrior, but there is a certain something in this as a as a complete package that takes some beating, and in in some cases it actually is better than my. My Guildford Mini Extra Slim, which is my EDC. So why why don't I dispense with my Guildford and just go the whole hog with this? Well, it's simply it's simply because I like the smaller form factor. I like the fact that I can uh, it takes a, an insert as a pen. I mean, this this is just the the weight of this is substantially less than this, and you know it, it's. Uh, the minimalist thing is is very much a, a thing with me, but what it what adds to this versatility is the fact that this is actually small enough in form factor to take out on the road. It just about fits a pocket, certainly a jacket pocket, and I don't like, I just don't like the sheer height of a personal size Filofax. Um, I just don't like that uh, when I'm out and about. In, it's fine on my desk, but I, I just don't like the form factor. I much prefer... This is a good compromise between minimalist and 
something altogether taller and larger. So, would I would I would I would I choose this over this? Um, well, if I wasn't so goddamn into minimalism, then probably I would. But uh, no, this is this is my main thing, and always will be, um, at, l at least from a point of view of form factor. Uh, but this takes some beating, and and from a point of view of versatility, this beats this system hands down, simply because you can move, you can move pages from here to here and then here to here it, it just works very very well especially if what you're writing you want to you want to keep so i think i've just about um covered everything on my on my list um the only other thing one final thing and i i've mentioned this on more than one video this is a, a um um an obsolete an obsolete uh um an obsolete uh form factor that uh that filofax only use very very briefly um and i think because of that and because of the lack of knowledge about the existence of the four-ring filofax, I know they make four-ring A4 filofaxes, but when I mean four-ring, four I mean this, this pocket-sized uh, version that they made very, very briefly in, in, the, uh, in the early 90s in England. Uh, prices have risen. Um, I paid £3 for this. I'm not quite sure. I I think I actually paid slightly more. I think I paid five pounds for this one, and I didn't notice the corrosion when I bought it. But you know, all's fair in love and war. But I paid three pound for this, and then it's in exceptionally good condition. Apart from, for some reason, there's a there's a a tear here. I don't know whether that was uh, done by the. The, one of the previous owners or whether it was just uh, Filofax themselves that just made a mistake here um, but um, I paid £3 for this which is obviously a, a bargain plus I think £3.50 postage so £6.50 it cost me here in the UK uh, I think uh, about a year ago but I have seen these I have seen these 20, 30, 40, even, and I recently saw one um, described as uh, rare vintage Filofax for £50. Now, don't buy one of these for £50 um, unless you really, really want to. Um, they, uh, they have become more expensive for some reason recently. Um, and also, uh, one of the things... That, that's pushing the price up is people, and this is a warning. Um, some sellers are describing them as vintage and uh, rare and um, genuine leather. Well, it is genuine leather, but th th they they are masquerading. They they are conveniently forgetting to point out that this is a four-ring filofax. Um, and so I suspect that some people are buying these thinking that they are a, a traditional vintage six-ring Filofax, personal-sized, um, and not realising until they've bought it that it's a, it's a four-ring Filofax. So be, be very, very careful. And conversely, if they're not mentioning the four-ring uh, then uh, the, the four-ring aspect, then there may be, if you look for one of these, don't put into the search title four-ring Firefax because it's because a lot of sellers don't even mention that it's for four-ring. Um, from experience, I, I've noticed that a lot of them actually put into, put into the title kid leather. Um, so if you type in to your search term, if you look for kid leather, uh, you may come up with 
one or two of these models where the seller isn't he hasn't even bothered to mention that it's four ring but if you look at the photographs you subsequently find out it is so kid leather would be a good more would be my suggestion as a as a search term if you're looking for one of these but um, I'll stop there. I think it's a fantastic thing. And in my humble opinion, uh, I think this is possibly the most versatile Filofax ever made. Please leave your comments. Thank you for watching.